Sometimes you need to capture good audio, but it just isn't possible to record that audio using a clip-on lavalier or handheld mic. Perhaps the situation is changing too fast. There are too many people you need to get sound from in a relatively close location, or it just wouldn't be appropriate or possible to mic each person individually using your available gear. Well, that's when you might want to consider turning to a shotgun microphone attached to a boom pole. The shotgun mic is typically mounted on the end of an extendable arm and holstered in a shock mount. The purpose of the shock mount is to mitigate noise caused by one's hands holding the boom at the other end. Most shotgun mics also have two sound modes. The first is what we call flat, where the microphone records all capable frequencies. The other rolls off the low end. This is especially useful if you're trying to capture audio outside, but the low rumble of the wind is overpowering your desired audio source, such as dialogue. Take a listen to the difference. Using a boom mic by yourself is possible if you lock your camera off on a tripod, but is more optimal if working with someone else because that person can concentrate on capturing the sound while you concentrate on your framing. There are two basic methods you can use to achieve the same result, and both have their pros and cons, so let's dive in so you can learn about their differences and plan for your shoot. The first method is to directly attach the boom mic using an XLR cable to the camera. Since not all wireless plug-on transmitters feature phantom power to power the mic, you'll have to use a cable instead. Alternatively, you could still use the plug-on transmitter if you put a battery in the mic and turn it on. If you do that, you'd be mixing the audio the way you normally do when using the wireless mic, setting the input on the camera to where that is connected. If you hardwire the mic using the XLR cable, you'll want to be careful to not create a tripping hazard so everyone is safe on set, including both boom and camera operators. Simply plug the XLR cable into the camera audio input and select that setting so it is mapped as your desired audio source. Be sure to use phantom power to send the 48 volts to the microphone if you're not using a battery in the mic. If you do that, it won't matter if the mic is on or off because the power will come from the camera using the XLR cable. Check your levels and you are ready to record. The second method uses an additional piece of hardware and requires a bit more time in post, but it means no wires or tripping hazards on set. That's because you'll be capturing audio separately from the video and putting them together in post. In fact, most professional sound engineers prefer to work this way, or they'll mix their audio and use the wireless transmitter to send that mix to the camera. For this demonstration, we'll use the Zoom field recorder to capture our audio. Make sure the Zoom recorder has a fresh set of batteries. You'll then want to plug the mic into the recorder using an XLR cable. Remember to use a properly formatted SD card in the field recorder. To format the card, first enter a card on the side of the unit. Then turn it on and press the menu button. Use the scroll wheel above it to navigate to SD card. Press the scroll wheel in to select it and then choose format and confirm. Next, let's set up the recorder. Press menu and use the scroll wheel once again to navigate, only this time going to input. Select input and make sure monitor is set to on. One and two link is set to on. Mono mix is set to on. And phantom is set to 48 volts. For most basic projects, 48 kilohertz and 16 bit audio should suffice. But if you want to bump up your quality, you could capture 24-bit audio, but keep in mind your file size will also then be larger as a result. There are a couple of ways to check this setting. The easiest is on the front of the unit by selecting button 4, labeled WAVE MP3. 
Make sure to use the scroll wheel so that you are capturing WAV files at 48 kilohertz and 16 bit. Press the one or two button beneath the mic button under the label input on the front. This tells the unit you want to use an external audio source that's plugged into those ports. You'll notice those ports are also numbered. You linked them earlier, so it doesn't matter which one you select as they are both paired. To see your audio levels, simply press the record button to arm the unit for recording. Notice it blinks. You'll now see the live levels as a reference. Use the record level plus or minus buttons on the side of the unit to adjust the level accordingly. Press the record button again to start recording. You'll see the time code ticking off, audio levels, and battery level along with other helpful information such as how much time is left on the SD card and if phantom power is enabled since that uses up battery. When finished your recording, press stop. And to turn off the unit, slide the power button over and hold it until it powers down. You can additionally slide that button over to the opposite direction when in use if you wish to lock it, preventing accidental power off. Now that you are familiar with how to get audio into the field recorder, let's learn how to sync both sound and picture. Some professionals have additional equipment that allows them to sync timecode across all devices, but you don't have to have fancy gear when achieving similar results in post. Let's review how to accomplish this using a basic slate. To use a slate, both the camera and sound recording devices should be rolling. It is ideal if the camera is zoomed in on the slate so you can see any critical information about the scene and also visually line up the clap. If you are not sending audio wirelessly in addition to capturing it on the sound recorder, be sure to have the camera's audio set to use the onboard microphone as a backup reference. Then with both devices recording, snap the slate and begin the take. When finished your scene, be sure to power down and disconnect all of your equipment so it is ready for the next use. Eject the SD cards and copy them into your project's local folder on the hard drive. In the editor, you may find a couple of different ways to sync your audio. But here's one way that will always work if you use a slate and clapper. Import both the visual and audio media into your editing software's timeline, stacking the two audio sources beneath each other on the same timeline. Examine the audio waveforms. Look for the snap of the clapboard from the beginning just before your take began and use that clap to align your audio. Then either mute or delete your camera's audio so that you can be sure you're working with the desired audio source, which is in this case, the boom microphone. Of course, you can always throw everything on the timeline and lasso it, then select synchronize, but sometimes this doesn't always work, so when you have a good audio sync reference, it's probably faster just to manually lock it in. One other way might be to mark in like you would if aligning the same video frame on multiple camera angles for a multi-clip edit workflow, and then selecting Merge. And now that you have seen how to manually sync your audio, you can appreciate what that and other options such as Synchronize do for your workflow to hopefully save you some time.